Good afternoon, welcome to Market Wrap number 140. Stuart Williamson here at the helm. Why am I doing it? Why do we do it? Supply our clients with, and those interested in, in property investment in the UK and other locations, a soup son of news to help them make buying decisions. This week we're covering what the rental market is doing, what's happening with inflation, predictions in the US housing market and what it means to us, flats and houses part two, and don't fight the Fed, and who are really the work from homers. So UK cities see record high rent increases. The average UK rent has increased £120 in the past year with London, Manchester and Glasgow seeing the biggest hikes. This is from Right Move and Zupa, two independent people. Zupa is normally very much up to date. The key takeaways are the average UK rent increased by £120 over 2022 to reach the highest level for a decade. Renters in London see the highest rent increases in the UK with annual growth at 16.1%. Rents are also increasing at a record pace in other cities such as Manchester, Birmingham, Nottingham, Glasgow, Edinburgh, all the usual sort of suspects. I think I've mentioned to you in Leeds it's gone up tremendously. The growth in, in rent is for new lets and reflects the experience of a quarter of all renters who move each year. For those staying put, the pace of rental increases is slower and data from the ONS on all private rented homes shows an average increase of 14.2%. So this is important to be aware of in that average homes are people who normally stick around, do two year tenancies, that sort of stuff. But you still have a quarter of all people moving every year. What that means is that if you buy somewhere like Manchester or uh, Birmingham, so parts of Birmingham at least, um, Nottingham, Sheffield, where they have you know 30% plus people in rental accommodation, then it means there's always going to be people looking for new new properties to rent, and that's the sort of places we should be buying. You know, buying in Whitby, which is a lovely location. You know, it's a great place to buy, but you're only going to fill it during the summer. It's not going to be filled in the winter. And what you want as a buy-to-let landlord is something that's full 95% of the time. Perhaps it's empty for two weeks a year while you have the rollover and get it repainted, but not empty at any other times. You want the right sorts of tenant. So really ABC ones, professionals. We don't want people who are going to be coming home and being sick in the corners of the front room at the weekends because that just adds to more wear and tear, makes it more difficult for you to maintain the property and, and, and it also gets a bit of a, you know, a, a smell to it. So it's important that you choose the right tenants, right education level, in the right locations where you've got maximum employment and it's what we would call ties, transport, infrastructure, employment. So make sure you have good transport to and from the city, good infrastructure around the city and good employment prospects. So what's causing rents to increase? You know, there isn't a single answer to this question as the pace at which rental values rise depends on a combination of different national and local factors. In 2022, we saw a chronic imbalance between the supply of homes to rent and the level of demand from renters. This encouraged competition between renters and gave rise to a sizable number of rent hikes. In addition, high inflation, High, high employment, not unemployment, high employment and strong wage growth in recent years are additional drivers of the rental growth, especially in, in urban centres, places like the, the regional cities we've talked about. And what does it mean to, to buy to let landlords? Despite all the negative talk, it's still a strong market. You know, remember, capital growth is a bonus. Someone else paying your mortgage off is to make great money. UK inflation falls. Last week we discussed the Bank of England saying that they believe inflation will be back below 2% in 18 months time. Now we're starting to see a little bit of evidence of movement in that direction. The UK's Consumer Price Index, CPI, the me key measure of inflation rose 10.1% during the year to January, according to figures this out this week. That's down from 10.5% in the year to December. And it's the third consecutive month of easing. The main areas were air and coach travel, petrol prices, restaurants, cafes, and takeaway prices, all easing, so not going up so quickly. So it brought the, the figure below economy's expectations and broadening line with the Bank of England's forecast published last month. 
a data published this week is also moving in the right direction. Okay, so this is a long wait to the 2% target, but so far so good, it's going in the right direction. In the US, Goldman Sachs data has just come out, which says house prices will not fall as much as they anticipated, which also indicates a positive outlook for the UK. By the time US home prices bottom out over this summer, according to Goldman Sachs, national home prices will be down at around 6% from June 2022 peak. Previously, Goldman Sachs researchers were expecting that a peak to trough decline would be closer to 10%. So the recession is not nearly as bad in the US as people are expecting to be. What next? Don't fight the Fed. What do we mean by that? It's an investing mantra. It suggests that you should align your choices and actions alongside those taken by the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve and the Federal Open Market Committee regarding interest rates, economic growth and price stability. In a great example of the topsy-turvy world that we're currently living in, in a time of rising interest rates when stock markets and house prices should fall, the opposite is happening. The S&P has risen by 15% on the year so far. And yesterday, the FTSC passed 8,000 points for the first time in its history. Britain's blue chip index reached a new intraday high of 8,003.66, recovering from a low of 7,921. Quite extraordinary. Tuesday was the fourth new record set this month. Why is this? Goes back to where we talked about inflation. A bigger than expected drop in inflation in January raised expectations that the Bank of England may have ended its run of 10 consecutive interest rate rises. Now, we don't believe that. We think there probably is another one to come, but it's, it's petering out now. The inflation we have seen is in line with Bank of England's expectations, as we said, indicating the economy is cooling and meaning it's less likely that policymakers will have to raise interest rates much further. What next? Flats are back. As we reported in the Zupa report last week, flats are in high demand in Birmingham, Nottingham, Manchester, at twice the level of demand for houses. Nifrank and Lund London Res data now shows it's the same for Prime, for Prime Central London, PCL. Amid the return of overseas buyers, three quarters of homes sold during Q4 last year were flats, the highest level for three years. And it's not surprising when you look at the passenger numbers arriving at Heathrow. In December, there were 11% fewer arrivals than the same month in 2019. The equivalent drop in 2021 was 53%. So as a result, the proportion of flat sales in PCL in Q4 2022 was 74%, which is the highest level in three years, according to this data. The, the change is benefiting markets where apartments are more prevalent. The strongest annual price growth in the prime central London was in South Ken, plus 5.5%, and Knightsbridge, plus 4.5%. It's a great quote here. Returning international buyers can see there has been very little change in prices over the last two to three years, and that's driving demand for flats, says Stuart Bailey, Knight Frank's head of London sales. He goes on to say buyers are particularly motivated by more central areas and at higher price points. OK, work from home. Who's doing it? Who are the culprits? Uh, public sector workers are driving the work from home boom, official data has shown. Figures emerge as Jacob Reason Mogg urges civil servants to return to their desks. Public sector workers and well-paid Londoners are the ones who are driving the work from home boom, according to new figures from the ONS. Okay, well-paid Londoners, public sector. Around two-fifths of workers are now working remotely, some or all of the time, up from 12% before the pandemic. <clears throat> Excuse me. But the new figures show the, show the perk is much more common amongst people with degrees, high earners, and those working for the state. More than one in three employees in the public sector do hybrid working, compared to a quarter of those in the private sector. Separate data from the Cabinet Office shows that only, only just over half of civil servants in some government departments were in the office in January, even during the weeks uninterrupted by train strikes. I mean, you look at the UK, and it does make you wonder what's going on. So this sort of atten attendance is despite calls from senior government figures such as Mr. Rees-Mogg urging civil servants to return to their desks. 
The HMRC, for example, which has significant backlog up to six months of backlog of work, only had an in-person attendance of 55 to 56 percent during the weeks of January 9th to 27th. Across all workers, those of higher education levels and better incomes are more likely to dial in from the comfort of their homes. Some 8 in 10 people in the highest income tax brand, taking in more than £50,000 a year, were working remotely at least some of the time. Meanwhile, at the opposite end of the spectrum, three quarters of those with the lowest earnings of up to £10,000 did not have the option. The same schism is, is reflected across uh, education. Degree educated workers much more likely to be able to work in their pyjamas. One in four workers with a degree work remotely all the time, while 44% are going to work sometimes. There have been many grumblings and, and, you know, from younger workers who are missing out on opportunities by shunning the office, including Rushi Sinek, saying this is the case. Yet the data shows they are actually the least likely to be working remotely. Only 6% of 16 to 24 year olds were working purely remotely, while four fifths travelled to work. In fact, those aged 35 to 44 were the most likely to stay at home, typically as hybrid workers. So they're not missing out by not being in the office, they're actually in the office taking part of it. It's the wealthy fat cats who are taking it easy. So in summary, this market wrap, inflation potentially peaked, that all goes well for UK interest rates. Same with US house price falls. As they say, when the US sneezes, the UK gets a cold. Flats are doing well. We are seeing great purchasing activity in these city centres. So thank you for watching. Do like, subscribe. Do complete the form below if you'd like more information. Do go to our podcast because Paul Shearer is a professional, far better than this channel, and a gent. Take care. Cheerio.